Anyways, uh, phone call interrupted my video, so. <coughs> uh, where was I at? Oh, laid down the divorce and all that good stuff. And basically just, you know, tried to. I was like, here, take all this and I'll take this little tiny pile of stuff. And in the end of all that, uh, she kept being adamant that she wanted me to wait until three days after the divorce papers were signed for me to come get my stuff. And I was just like, why three days? Why, why three days? Why do I got to wait three days to come get my stuff? Why, why, why? And I knew the answer. I knew why. She had every intention of screwing me over. But my wife <clears throat> was talking, or my fiance yes I was engaged while in the middle of a divorce but uh, my fiance was talking to my ex ex-wife's new fiance and them both being military <clears throat> they thought that you know they had good enough code of honor between the two of them that the guy Mike said uh, you know he promised and swore that nothing devious would happen and my wife being a little bit of a soft hearted little gullible you know she likes to trust people she believed him that nothing janky was going to happen and in turn she told me to trust her and she did have the fear that <clears throat> If I trusted her and he screwed her or screwed me over, then I would resent her for it because basically I was putting my stock in her. Which, you know, probably for a minute I did, but you know, she can't control her actions. He's got this personality he can turn on that is like, I don't know, I always call it a telephone operator voice. Since, uh, since all this stuff began, my ex-wife and this guy like, you know that they don't talk the way that they talk all the time. They've got what I call a telephone operator voice. Where, oh, hi, absolutely, totally, you know, whatever. It doesn't sound like a normal human being talking. Because they sound like they're talking on a telephone. And, uh, to me it's them putting on their, their fake persona. But, so he convinced my fiancé that... Everything was going to go smooth as butter. <clears throat> so I signed the divorce papers. You know, we, we did all the property separation. It took about a month of back and forth on the phones to get everything just right the way we liked it or whatever. <clears throat> I was also supposed to get a $500 check within 90 days. I never got that. But three days after, I showed up to get my stuff. And uh, they pretty much just destroyed everything. There was a few items that didn't have sustain any damage, but also showing up to pick my shit up, they made this huge scene. Like it was like we had the opportunity at that moment right there to just peacefully and amicably separate. You know, she had already got the bigger pieces of the pie. You know, she got the kids. I wasn't arguing with her. All I wanted to do was just show up, pick up my stuff, and. You know, everybody just part their own ways in life and do, you know, just work in the best interest of the children. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Uh, it was a series of crap. Like, just, you know, you imagine getting, to start digging through your stuff and you're like, yep, that's missing. Yep, that's missing. Yep, that's missing. Yep, that's missing. Holy crap. You know, so much stuff missing. And then my kids came to visit me for my first visit. And, you know, we had agreed before the divorce was finalized that, you know, any time that the kids wanted to see me or call me or talk to me, whatever, you know, all lines of communication were going to be wide open. There was going to be no stonewalling at all, no, you know, manipulating the children for our own benefit or whatever <clears throat> against the other. And, you know, the kids came to me that first visit. <clears throat> and my daughter told me, and my son both told me, 
that mommy said that I did not even fight for them in court. I just let mommy have, or actually not that, that a judge decided that mommy was the better parent, so that's why they get to live with her. So, you know, that irked me, and she had already done me dirty on all the property. So, you know, that's that caused friction. That caused a bunch of tension that did not need to be there. You know, you know, to make things smooth, all that would have had to happen was just give me my little bit of property. There wasn't even that much. You know, to this day, she's probably got, I don't know, a thousand dollars worth of stuff that I really would like to have, but I'll probably never see it. She's probably got some little chest or drawer or something that's like, haha, this is all the stuff I screwed him over on. Uh, probably the next six months after the divorce it was just a lot of snide bullshit you know the kids would show up with something wrong you know like Logan or Trinity just covered in bed bug bites like infected and nasty you know okay if you can't control the bed bugs okay I understand you know it's it's an infestation you're having problems with it but to let all the the kids wounds from the bed bugs get all infected and sore and swollen and pussy like, I didn't see any need in that. The kids, they got so bad on the children that <clears throat> whenever I brought them over, or they came to my house for Christmas break, by the time they left, they were almost completely gone because I was putting ointment on it twice a day and making sure the wounds were clean. <coughs> and, uh, <clears throat> so, after they left for Christmas break, they came back for the next visit two weeks later and covered in bites again. So I made a big deal about it, you know, reading the text messages. I probably should put the things out there somewhere for anybody watching this to sort of see what's been going on via text message. But, uh, she would never accept any, like, I'd say, hey, you need to do something about your bed bug infestation because these kids are, you know, they're obviously getting torn up. And she would just message me like, I don't know what you're talking about. We don't have bed bugs. Uh, and that would pretty much be the end of the conversation. You know, if I say anything to the contrary, whatever, she just stops talking. You know, a no contact rule is what you use on a narcissist. But a narcissist also uses a no contact on you. But the no contact, no contact that they use is they stir up a bunch of shit and then they put up the no contact so that you're standing on the other side of the wall flailing your arms like an idiot and looking like the crazy one. It's called stonewalling. <clears throat> uh, they make you look and feel like you're the crazy one. You know, be a gaslighting or whatever. I seriously I questioned my sanity so many times throughout the course of this like the thing that kept me going was the fact that the people <clears throat> there were so many people involved in this and you know at first there was like a line that was drawn in the sand and you know say half stood on one side and half stood on the other and I didn't really know what I had done to the half that were standing on her side to get them to stone, you know, stonewall me, but it was because they were just trying to stand by, you know, the person that they loved and cared about. And as time progressed, and the thing is, this is important, all the people that were left on my side, I never told any of them not to talk to her. I actually wanted them to talk to her because I was always hoping that there was someone that could get through to her to make her come to her senses and to stop the damage and destruction that is caused by turmoil. Like, if there's no friction, there's no heat. Don't give friction and you won't have heat. And <clears throat> she just likes friction. I don't get why she likes being separated. She don't care about her family. She don't care about her children. She don't care about anybody, but she loves friction. Any kind of piece of sand that she can get between the two 
items to cause more friction, she she wants to wedge it in there and then you know strip away any kind of lubrication. <clears throat> but uh, she really just does not care about anyone but herself. The kids are a prize in this divorce. Uh, there's not one member of her family left. Um, okay, let's go back to the line in the sand. Let's first off just say that there's nobody that is not standing on my side of the sand line. And her excuse is, is that, oh, it's just because they all like drama and you give them all the drama they want. I don't give them drama. Like, there's, like, I update them whenever there's danger, whenever my ex gives or puts the children in dangerous situations, I let them know. <clears throat> and I'm always going to let them know. And if the danger is serious enough, I let CPS know. I'm going to let them know every single time. Uh, there's been many incidents that I feel I would not place my children in the positions that she did but you know that's the gray area like in the very beginning of this whole video here I was saying that there's this gray line that people scoot around on the ground that says what's right and what's wrong and you know I'm gonna say what I believe to be right she's gonna say what she believes to be right but to me the best thing is is like if you got two people trying to decide what's right Put it in a third party, third person perspective and let the third person decide who's right. You know, and if you're willing to listen, then, you know, and grow as a human being, then you can grow. So, <clears throat> anyways, all this bad stuff's going on and the kids are witnessing it all happen because they had to get sheltered from nothing. <clears throat> I am not going to sit back and let her tell the kids that a judge decided that they live with her because a judge did not decide that. Me and her came to an agreement that they would live with her. And honestly, like the only reason I really even laid it down and the reason why there's no resentment or ill will was first off is I really just don't resent her. Even after all this, I don't resent none of them. Like, I understand that there's problems. They got stuff going on in their heads that they don't understand nothing about. They're, they're not awake. They're not, they have no, they have no enlightenment. They don't, they don't have the ability to see someone else's perspective. There's, there's really nothing about them that says, oh, I'm an intelligent human being who can, you know, think critically which I'm a slow thinker and I'm bad memory, but I like to consider myself to be extremely rational. And I have nothing to hide. I never do. I never have. Like I've been raised in a <clears throat> like a very public, you know, shed light on everything my whole life. And I don't think that that's a bad thing. You know, I. If you do something that you don't want other people to know you do, don't do it. You know? Uh, growing up, like, I shoplifted a little bit and I smoked some pot when I was a kid. You know, growing up in the world that I grew up in, lucky that's all I got into was a little bit of pot. I've never been addicted to any substance except cigarettes. I hate that. <clears throat> Nicotine, whatever, because now I vape. But, uh... I don't have any resentment of bitterness, but, like, when I was a week ago or so, the Dr. Phil show contacted me because uh, my ex-wife's family had contacted the producers and the producer was extremely interested in our story. And Dr. Phil being like one of the number one psychologists in America, whatever, like not necessarily by saying that he's better than any other psychologist, but most well known for sure is a... Uh, wanted us to be on the show and they told us that we would definitely be candidates to be on the show 
if uh, my ex-wife would agree to come on the show. And as soon as I said that sentence, I was like, nope, she's not going to do it. She she won't do it because there's, she's a pathological liar and she doesn't even stack her lies well. So if we were to go on the show, then she knows that she would be decimated. So like I told the producer, you know, there's no way she'll ever agree to it. Uh, and he said, oh, you know, I've got my ways or whatever. You know, I've been doing this a long time. I can get him on the show. And honestly, I mean, to me, the best bet would have been to say, hey, with or without you, he's going to go on here and air everything. And I would. And if she's not there to defend herself, then it's everything without even her rebuttal. You know, to me, a rebuttal is pointless because most everything that I'd be putting out there is off of a recording or a text message. Like, it's on it. It's legit. Like, I'm, I'm not faking it. I'm not tech-savvy enough to fake a text message. I'm not smart enough. I don't have any training to beat a lie detector test. And I'll gladly take any lie detector test. But, uh... So, yeah. I knew she wouldn't do that. So, like, I'm always looking for, like, a third-party miraculous person that can, you know, step between the two households and cause peace and happiness between everybody. Because like right now, like me and my wife are dealing with co-parenting with two other households. So you got my ex-wife and her new husband and then my wife's ex-husband and his new wife. And it's, it's harmonious on uh, my wife's side because her, they all get along. They call each other, I mean, Megan and Darian they're like best buds from like middle school or something. Like they go way back. <laughs> uh, they talk for hours every day, and they they sit up and they talk about problems they're having in their life. You know, whenever they're sick, they're like calling each other because they're sick and you know just want some comfort or whatever. If I'm at work, Megan will talk to Darian. If you know when Darian gets off work late at night she wants someone to talk to she calls my wife like they are friends like they are real friends like they were before my ex-wife had got in between them and spread a bunch of lies and filth pretty much and like that's all I ever wanted was a peaceful separation and honestly I tried to get a peaceful separation between me and my ex-wife for years before anything actually happened between us to cause a not peaceful separation which you know shit happened I didn't do what was in the best interest of everyone around me but honestly I don't think it would have mattered you know I could have done absolutely nothing and peacefully walked out you know to go join a monastery my ex-wife would have been destructive because she doesn't like losing and she would have been losing me <sighs> and I mean everybody tells me that you know it, it, well not everybody there's actually only maybe two people that tell me that you know all the chaos is my fault they don't understand that like years prior to the actual separation like when we were in Alaska uh, my ex-wife was cheating on me with this guy in a strip club. His name was Sean Jane Saxton. But uh, she was having an affair on me. And for months and months and months, I was sitting at home with the kids. <clears throat> you know, I was on unemployment and I was playing World of Warcraft way too damn much. So, my bad on that. But, like, she was working at a strip club as a cocktail waitress. And... She would get off work at like 2 o'clock in the morning and then tell me that she was going to the gym with one of her co-workers to this 24-hour gym in Anchorage <clears throat> to work out. You know, so she told me which gym she was going to and, you know, randomly one night she told me she was at the gym and I called the gym and I was, you know, the guy at the counter was like, yeah, there's, there's nobody in here. I was like, are you sure? Can you... 
go look around. He's like, I can see the entire facility from where I'm standing. There's nobody in here. So I was like, okay. So, you know, I'd already been dealing with thinking that something weird was going on. <clears throat> but, uh, she kept this ruse up for a long time. Like, when it finally hit me, I went to bed one night. She was out on the town. She was supposed to be off at the gym. <clears throat> and when I woke up, she was in bed next to me. And the phone rang. And it was the police saying that they had our car. And when I woke up, she dumped this whole long, crazy-ass story on me of how uh, the car was broke down and she left the keys with Sean so that he could fix the car and then he was going to bring it back to her the next day. <clears throat> but she said that he apparently was driving the car and got pulled over while drunk and got it impounded. Well, <clears throat> before going to the jail, like I was flipping my shit because I already suspected of her, her cheating and I told her, you know, this motherfucker was like driving my car around and I was just going to make a big huge scene and just mess his world up, press charges on him for stealing my car and shit. <clears throat> and she admitted to me that she had been having an affair with him and a couple other people. And I don't remember now, but it seemed like there was also a girl named Molly she was having an affair with at the time. I know she had a bunch of nude photos of that girl she brought home with her and she saved him for years. But uh, after After she told me that the shit had been going on, she also told me the reason why she told me was because she was actually with the guy when he got pulled over and the car went to impound, and she knew that her name was going to be listed on the police report that stated everything on it, so she figured, just come clean, but she didn't think about it until she had already lied to me about not being there to begin with, so, like, <clears throat> all those lies were in the air, then me and her went back to the house and we were arguing and basically she takes every fear I've ever told her I had and pins it against me. So I'm sitting here at, I don't know, like nine years into my relationship with this woman and, you know, she knows me pretty inside and out. She's been studying me and me having my head in the sand, I haven't been studying her. <clears throat> I was studying boss strategies for World of Warcraft, but, uh, she knew one of my fears was, you know, females using the police to control men. <clears throat> so, she told me <clears throat> that if I left her, that if I left her, she was going to hurt herself and call the cops and tell the cops that I did it. So, I'm sitting here seriously feeling like I am in a complete and total bind. Cell phones weren't like really big at the time, but we did have them. But <clears throat> the, like the camera things weren't all that, I don't know. I guess the thought process of grabbing a camera and recording what was going on wasn't super important at the time. Now, you know, as soon as something happens, I'm grabbing my phone and I'm recording it. Uh, but at that time, I looked out the door and there was this guy walking by with his groceries in hand and I opened the window real quick and I was like, hey, help man, I need your help. I'm in here with a woman, she is completely okay, but she tells me if I leave her, she's going to hurt herself and call the cops and tell them that I hurt her. <clears throat> uh, you know, just what, what apartment are you in? If the cops show up, I'll tell them you can come see. and. I jumped out of the window and took off running. I got the hell out of there. First thing I did, I went straight for the bank and I drained all the money out and I put it into a money order that only I could cash because it was written out to me. <clears throat> and I drove back to the house immediately after draining the bank account. When I got back to the house, there were two cops there and she was giving them a statement that I had slammed her head into a wall. She was sitting there pointing at her scalp like, oh yeah, right here's where he hit me. And I was like, yep, I knew she was gonna do this. So I got this guy down here 
to to witness everything going on and you know one officer went over there to talk to that guy and while that officer was off talking to the witness then I pulled out the money order while I was standing there with the other cop and I said look I got a money order here that I just took out all you know all the money out of the bank if you're really going to go through with pressing some false charges on me then this is going with me and at that time she pretty much told the cops that she was okay she didn't just straight up admit that she was lying but she did diffuse it enough to where the cops were like okay let's go y'all don't use us like this and then basically feeling like we had each other's hands tied behind each other's backs because she was really willing to destroy my entire existence she wanted to try and get me arrested for assault put in Alaska prison for uh, domestic violence isn't nice like it's it's a rough situation to be in but she was willing to get me sent to prison for you know five plus years because she cheated on me and you know I just wanted explanations I never harmed her I you know I wanted answers I was loud I'm sure that there was some abusive comments come out of my mouth because I was just furious that you know, the woman I had been with for nine years was fucking some dude at a bar. And it's just a fucking old bald guy. You know, I'm getting bald too, so I can't really judge too much. But yes, I got frustrated at that time. And then, you know, the next three months, basically, I sat on that money order. And she basically did everything she could to pacify my depression. And at the end of probably say three months or something she was just like you know <clears throat> tired of this shit i mean every damn tv commercial would make me cry you know movies were exceptionally depressing uh i mean seeing a yellow cab okay so like when she got pulled over she took a yellow cab home and the only time i had ever even known anybody in my family to take a cab Every time I saw a yellow cab, it reminded me of the night all that shit happened. So I would, like, spiral off. So, anyways, after three months of this crap, <clears throat> she's like, okay, I had enough of this shit. You're too sensitive, blah, blah, blah. You gotta move past your shit or we're done. And I was like, just mustered up the courage and bam, I knocked it out of me like that. And, uh... I kept bringing it back up and like using it as fuel and that's not a good idea. You know, if you're going to move on and move past it and forgive, then yes, you need to forgive and forget. Don't hold on to no shit. But <clears throat> I kept bringing it up for probably another six months after that, maybe even a year, intermittently, like it dwindled. You know, she, I'd bring it up, she'd tell me I'm not supposed to bring it up and then I'd move on past that, but so all this destruction and damage and things that I had to do because she cheated on me. Now, did I cause her to cheat on me? I could say yes, I did. My bad. Stupid World of Warcraft locked me up. And you know, there I go again, blaming it on World of Warcraft. It was me. I was wanting to escape the reality of my life that I was unhappy. I was in a miserable marriage. I honestly felt like I was a shitty parent because I was so addicted to this stupid video game. <clears throat> Shit, honestly, I mean, I probably knew more about like my friends in the game than I did about my kids. I missed out so much. I missed out on so much of their lives when I was playing the game. But, like, I was using the game to escape reality. The reality was I was miserable. The game made me happy. <clears throat> so, craziness, that was when, you know, I was like, you know, why can't we just separate peacefully, you know, over and over again, I kept telling her, it was like, you know, I had seen probably uh, at least a half dozen or more situations to where I could seriously tell that she was meant to be with women. Like, she just was meant to be with women. Like, 
I don't know how to explain it, except for, you know, <clears throat> I just know. And I know everything about her said that she was either bisexual or lesbian, but didn't want to admit it because she had already seen how her dad got upset and cast her sister aside for coming out as uh, bisexual and then eventually a uh, you know, full-on lesbian. So, <clears throat> just like, you know, her, her dad didn't like, you know, the kids dating outside of their race, you know, that, so she never did. But her sisters, on the other hand, didn't care what their dad thought, so they did whatever they wanted and, you know, dated whoever they wanted, you know, which is the way it should be. You know, to me, all these things that are in place, you know, race, religion, you know, rich, poor, criminal, non-criminal, whatever. Everything is put in place to cause separation between people. And, you know, once we can get rid of all the separation, you'll have a whole lot more unity. And you get a lot further with unity than you do with separation. You know, ants can move objects way bigger than themselves by working together. We can, we can do stuff way beyond ourselves by working together. But, you know, standing alone, you can't do much. But, uh... Man, I just... All over the place in this conversation. Well... <clears throat> I wish I could have been on the Dr. Phil show. Like, I, I would be under... I would submit to the most rigorous scrutiny. Like, I have no problem being honest. I love being honest. I love hearing honesty. I... I can't stand lies. I can't stand bullshit. Uh, I was a codependent personality disorder. <clears throat> My ex-wife was a narcissistic personality disorder with sociopathic tendencies. Or a sociopath with narcissistic personality tendencies. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. And, you know, most narcissists, sociopaths are never going to actually admit to being a narcissist or a sociopath. If they do, it's outside of character. But, you know, reverse reactions to situations is the red herring to narcissistic personality disorder. When she cheated on me, she crucified me. That is definitely a reverse reaction to a situation. When I finally, after 14 years, decided I was going to cheat on her, like, you should have seen it. She was like, when she found out she was trying to help me and my girl find an apartment together. It was weird. Like, she, you know, called us up and said, hey, you know, go take Trinity Gymnastics. Me and my girlfriend took, which she's my wife now, took my daughter to gymnastics together. Like, this was all in the first couple days. But when I had initially left my ex-wife, she went on this campaign of, <clears throat> character defamation like just shitting all over me and Megan but once <clears throat> once she realized that things weren't going to be that bad she started to try and be real nice but she basically punched Megan in the throat really hard and then expected Megan not to respond so Megan got pissed and called CPS on my ex-wife and I don't know, it just turned into, you know, blow for blow, blow for blow, everything back and forth after that. And it never really settled down. And I don't, I don't get how we can put our guns down for three months. And then we're told, you know, we didn't try hard enough because we didn't make it four months without responding or reacting to one of their situations. And they put us in situations so often it's hard not to give an irrational reaction especially out of two people because yes although you may be able to control one you can't control both at all times it is hard especially when you find out your kids are being left alone with fucking weird creepy perverts in the house at night while they're all hammered and going to bed and the kids are yeah, weird story. Anyways, they had this guy over. They met him at a bar. They brought him home. They got him drunk. They left him alone in the house. 
in that morning, the kids were getting ready for school, and this guy took two of the kids to the bathroom, sat them on his lap, put his hands on his shoulders, and started asking them weird questions. And the weird questions being, looking straight into the boy's eyes, Logan, my son, are you a boy? And then looking directly into the eyes of the girl on her his other lap, while holding them both by the shoulders and neck area, are you a girl? Like, what kind of weird-ass question is that? Is this your house? I mean, it is 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning, and this guy is asking them if they live at the house that they're at. <clears throat> and so my oldest daughter started pounding on the bathroom door, and I guess some ruckus happened. Finally, Alexander and Mike got up, and I pinned the dude down and made him go to sleep, and the kids went to school, and CPS was called by the principal of the school because the principal felt that they needed to be involved, and I guess Alexander and Mike both had to promise CPS that that guy would never be at their house again to basically just get this to go away. And this was probably CPS visit number four. The first one was done by a friend of mine that had heard some information about some extreme drug use. Uh, the second one I called because uh, when I showed up to get my kids, the guy had a fucking gun pulled on the other side of the door and I had heard about him assaulting one of my ex-wife's friends choking her to the ground and he was using cocaine and you know the chemistry behind cocaine I don't know how cocaine works but you know the guy said he used cocaine so that he could drink more alcohol and it wouldn't really affect him as much I don't know how that shit works but that's what was repeated so yes I called CPS after <clears throat> he choked out a 20 year old girl in the house with my kids and yeah and it was using cocaine so I mean everything that has happened on my end I feel like has been justified now I'm sure on their end they're looking at it going oh he's just calling CPS to try and bully us with CPS or maybe they know that it is just but they still don't think that I should do it because I don't know what reason I wouldn't call CPS, but I'm sure there's some reason because no person is wrong given their perspective of the world. And I know that. I know that she does not believe that she is doing wrong. She probably doesn't assume that she's doing good, but she, she can't possibly think that she's doing right or what is true and fair by, I don't know, fabricating assault charges, fabricating, you know, me threatening the life of my children, fabricating, uh, I mean, there was some shit that she, like, of course, I, just like a child, lied to keep myself out of trouble, but there's, to me, there's a difference if you lie to keep yourself out of trouble versus lying to get someone else in trouble. If you're lying to get someone else in trouble, that's then you're you're doing something wrong. And I don't care where you put that line in the sand, you're wrong. And you know during the during the protective order there was some weird shady shit went on with like Netflix and stuff, like my kids contacted me through Netflix and my wife responded, but I knew about it, so like I don't know how that shit works. I didn't tell her to respond, I didn't tell the kids to contact me, but the kids did contact me nonetheless, so I don't know. And they, it was Father's Day and my daughter changed the name on my Netflix account to Happy Father's Day Daddy, I love you. And man, talk about going like two months without seeing my kids. As soon as I saw that, as soon as I saw that message, like I was sitting on the floor, about to drink some red wine and eat a uh, vegetable platter, broccoli and carrots and celery, and 
the snow peas and some ranch dressing. And on Father's Day, knowing I missed my kids, and I opened up Netflix. We're going to watch, I think it was Orange is the New Black or something like that. And my Netflix account name had changed to, to the Happy Father's Day, Daddy. I love you. And, like, talk about seeing a dad cry. Like, that was my saddest, like, one of my saddest memories of the last year was that moment. I was like, oh, my God, my daughter found a way to contact me. So Megan changes it and says, hey, it's Megan. If you need anything, just call me and put her number. All this in the profile name of Netflix. Well, my ex-wife found that out and then tried to get me arrested for for that. You know, my daughter had contacted me. My girlfriend at the time had responded. 